Welcome back to the Hotel Orloff here. It's uh, not even daybreak. Going to be a cold, cold day here in rural retreat, Virginia. We going to have some snow. <laughs> so, how have you guys been doing? He's a, he's a fantastic man. And, uh, we've had a good um, time. I want to just thank all of the uh, supporters. Got some cool stuff to show you. Let me show you something I just got in the mail the other day. Unexpectedly, a, a surprise present. Let me show you here. You see that creature from the Black Lagoon there? Made like one of those old. Sokies from the 1960s. Let me uh, pull him up. Okay. This was a present. Um, just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Sorry. Let me put this mask back where it belongs. Trying to get in the Halloween spirit, but uh, this is where the mask belongs, of course, on top of this uh, Christmas caroler. Okay, so we put the mask back, and then we put my father's um, hat on top. Not to be disrespectful or anything, it just, I always thought this like to have this uh, here in the lobby of the Hotel Orloff, ladies and gentlemen, just to be patriotic. So now the Christmas caroler is back the way he should be. Okay, so why are you here so early on a Sunday morning? Why it's uh, not even 7 o'clock a.m.? I'm going to do a couple of shows today, I guess. I... Uh, um, yeah, because it's almost Halloween. In fact, it is Halloween here in the community of Rural Retreat, Virginia, because today, between 5 and 7 p.m. tonight, uh, that's when everyone trick-or-treats here. And uh, so on the 31st, on actual Halloween, there won't be any trick-or-treaters. So I got some candy. I'm ready got 90 something pieces of candy but I think I need to go and get some more I also need to get some dog food so that's somewhere where I need to go today and it probably wouldn't hurt to pick up some more macaroni and cheese gummies our official sponsor here on the uh, Hotel Orloff Um, okay, what was I was going to, what was I going to show you? Um, hold on a second. Let me, let me sit you guys down. I got to, just a minute. Where will I put you? Here, you can watch Donald Trump for a few minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, so my wife is uh, 
really likes Glenn Danzig. She, you know, I I like the Misfits when they were when they were around, and I, I think I actually preferred the Cramps. But uh, Misfits, you know, they were great, absolutely. But uh, after the Misfits, I kind of just lost uh, track of what was going on with Sam Hain and Danzig. But my wife, younger than me, 13 years younger than me, she's into that. So she used to have this box set of Sam Hain, the band that was formed instantly um, after the Misfits. Um, Glenn Danzig uh, decided to... He wanted to have better, a better band, so he uh, created Sam Hain, and uh, so I guess around 2000 they put a box set out of the Sam Hain CDs, right? And they had a special comic book in there and <clears throat> a VHS cassette, and the box set is now really valuable, where people will pay six, seven hundred dollars for it. So my wife got one cheap online through some i don't know facebook group so she just got that in so um i guess i can learn about danzig's post misfits music uh um i just i don't know why i didn't get into it i don't know maybe it seemed too satanic or something i i don't know but i listen to black sabbath so i i don't know what i can tell you um my wife didn't like this uh, dog poop in the uh, in the lobby of the Hotel Orloff, so I, I decided I would sit it down on the seat of this bicycle, so it wasn't. It's obvious. It's not real. It's not real poop. It's uh, fake dog poop, ladies and gentlemen. But speaking of dog poop, okay, here's the candy uh, that I got for tonight for a big Halloween. Uh, Look, look at this. Come here to Rural Retreat, Virginia, and you can get some of this candy. Look, how about that? So, I think I need a little bit more than that, because there are a lot of kids that come here to uh, the Hotel Orloff. Although it's going to be cold, in about a couple hours it's supposed to start snowing. Did I just mention that? It's supposed to snow for several hours, so there may still be snow on the ground when the kids are trick-or-treating. Um, okay, I was going to show you something. Oh, here we go. This, uh, <laughs> this is a uh, parody done by... Done by Graphic Man. The postman smashed it in the mail. I was very upset about that. But anyway, it's a uh, takeoff of a classic pre-code horror comic book cover. But of course, here it's Popeye and olive oil. But uh, actually, Glenn Danzig stole this art. Um, so, so this kind of... Uh, anyway, this stuff i got to take upstairs to... Uh, File away with my other poster stuff. Okay, anyway, here's the uh, here's the Sam Hain box set that she got. Let me uh, let's go through it, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Oh boy. Ouch. I'm wearing this coat inside because it's darn cold, even with the heater going. Although I hope the heater is going. But anyway, it's not. It's pretty cold here. It's about 30 degrees outside. Okay, so um, she gets this. It's obviously a used set. It's not in mint condition. The mint condition ones are going to go for 700 bucks. These Danzig collectors are pretty. Uh, Pretty uh, fanatic, fanatical. <laughs> yeah, because you can see there's like little bits of uh, creasing, you know, in the box. But anyway, here's the box, and there's the, uh, of course, this uh, <sighs> devil skull that Glenn Danzig uses is uh, taken from the front cover of a Marvel comic book, and uh, the Misfits logo. 
And of course, was the logo was the font of famous monsters of Filmland. And he took that pre-code horror uh, comic cover that I was just telling you about, and a lot of his um, art design is cut and paste. Well, there's the heater. I hear the heater going. It's uh, cut and pasted from other places. But um, obviously, Glenn Dadzig is a comic book fan and a monster kid. He's into all the stuff that we're in here at the Hotel Orloff. Whether or not you like his music, you have to admit he's into all the same stuff. Collects original art from Marvel Comics and old... Uh, um, I'm not... I don't know. I need to be I need to be careful what I say. His movies that he has made, I'm not the biggest fan of them, but I'm also not the biggest fan of Rob Zombie's I, I in fact I hate them. Um I you know, some people, you know, stick to music. Uh, you may not necessarily even though you love movies be the best uh, film director. Anyway, so this is the box, isn't it? Just incredible. It's uh, this is it's got all these albums in it. So we open it up. Now the guy that sold this to my wife, and she gave me permission to show this off. The guy that sold this to my wife said the comic book. I can't find the comic book that's supposed to go in here. The Glenn Danzig comic. Uh, it's somewhere here. I'll, I'll put another comic book in there, and then when I find that comic book, I'll send it to you. Okay, so he put a comic book in here that does have some value, although it's not, again, in the best condition. It could be flattened. I can never remember the, the pressing the comic book terminology. I'll never be a d good, decent member of the comic book community. Number one, because I hate most people that collect comic books. Not all, not you guys, but you, you know what I'm talking about, people that slab comics. But I can't remember the terminology. Is it flattening? Is it pressing? Is, uh, no, it's pressing. I always keep saying ironing. Anyway, this comic's not in the best shape. It's something you can find in dollar bins forever, or quarter bins, this comic book. But then people realized, oh, Glenn Danzig stole from the cover of this. It's actually artwork by Michael Golden. And uh, the, so this has, this is not much in demand by comic book collectors. This is in demand by Danzig collectors. So it's Chris Star, Crystal Warrior, based on a line of toys, you know, and Marvel was uh, doing all these, this licensing, uh, in uh, during this time period where they made comic books out of everything Godzilla Shogun Warriors Transformers Chris Star uh, they did a He-Man comic briefly although I think DC did it first then Marvel uh, what else did they do sectars uh, in humanoids any toy line they were doing anything, you know. There was some guy that was climbing up buildings in New York called the Human Fly. They made a comic book out of him. It was really kind of a disappointing time period for me because it was actually kind of the decline of comics for me. And then, oh, and it's actually on the back of here. Then Atari came along with the games you could play in your house, the Atari 2600, and then there was in television. And then the comic book industry just, to me, nosedived because kids weren't reading comics anymore. They were playing video games, and you couldn't go in a 7-Eleven or a Stop and Go or a U Totem and buy a comic book or a drugstore anymore because they changed the distribution method for comics where they were only sold in comic book stores for the most part, and kids didn't go in comic book stores. So comic books started... The comics I loved in the early 70s and the comics that I worshipped that were almost unobtainable from a few years before in the 1960s and the comics that I were just absolutely untouchable to me, like the early 50s and 40s comics, I'd read about them in the Jim Steranko history of comics. I'd read about them in the Monster Times and stuff. 
but uh, you know EC comics and the pre-code horror and all that and the old golden age heroes I could never find those but I love I was a child of the early 70s in the in the bronze age and by the time this UPC code came along on the covers to me the comic industry was pretty much in decline and yes there were great things that happened in the 80s and a few things that happened in the 90s and, and as far as I'm concerned the comic industry has been dead for 35 40 years yeah probably you know and then then they tried to you know make more adult comics and do things like make you know change the catwoman's history and make it all sorted and and uh, they killed off everything i love with crisis on an infinite earths and then they tried to sell toy lines of their comics with secret wars from marvel i just didn't like it but anyway so anyway, what what am I looking at? Okay, here's the devil head here, drawn by Michael Golden, that was uh, used. Um, see, see the head there. It's the same head, basically. And uh, Michael Golden didn't get one cent from it. Um, and really, it sh Marvel never tried to sue. Michael Golden couldn't sue because. Marvel owned this, you know, and so inside the comic, I don't think there's anything that looks like that devil head inside the comic. It's very uh, Conan the Barbarian looking kind of stuff inside. Um, yeah, that, that devil skull thing uh, inside the comic, the monster that appears looks more like that, so anyway <laughs> so I guess, I hate to use the word iconic but that is, that is a very iconic image, so the type people that are into Danzig are gonna be you know, which there's a big crossover between Danzig fans and comic book fans, and because Danzig's a comic book guy. He's always, you know, you see footage from him in the 90s and he's reading Wolverine comics and everything. And some people actually thought he would have been good casting for Wolverine. I'm trying to be nice because he's about the height of the character in the comic. Um, but Hugh Jackman did a great job. I know that and everything. No, I'm hearing this new Deadpool movie. I'm hearing, you gotta see this new Miss Marvel. What the... F Captain Marvel movie that's coming out called The Marvels, or you won't understand Deadpool 3. <laughs> that's just so typical of Disney. They're, uh, they're gonna ruin the Deadpool movie by making you watch these terrible movies. Uh, oh, anyway, there's a whole booklet. A lot of this stuff I can't really show on a family channel, but anyway, there's a long, there's a thin booklet here. Um, this booklet seems to be in okay condition. It's not destroyed, but anyway, you get this in it. So anyway, uh, this comic was included. Now this comic sells for uh, people sell, try to sell it on eBay for $50, $60. I'd have to look at completed sales to see what it's really going for. I mean, in this condition, it's probably a $25, $30 book. But, I mean, Danzig fans are, go, go ape for it because it's got this iconic skull. So you got the comic book, you've got this little booklet. And then you've got these uh, little miniature CDs. I don't really like CDs to be stored in cardboard covers, but anyway, little replicas of what the records look like. And so uh, there's that little head. Yeah, see. That's one record. Here's Sam he Sam Hain 3, November Coming Fire. How about that? Here's one I can't show, so I will have to censor it. Um, there's a girl there I will censor because it's not appropriate for a family program. All right. Here's a live 1986. Yeah, this was... Okay, so... 
I guess the misfits must have broken up about the time I graduated high school, around 82, 83. I graduated in 83. They were a band that was around when I was in high school in the early days of punk rock. Um, so this is live Sam Hain from 85, 86. Okay. So I, 85, 86, I was totally into the cramps. I wasn't even paying attention to this, but apparently it's great. That's what I'm told. My wife has good taste in music. So I will listen to these records and I will figure that out. Here's a, here's a little, I, I don't know if this actually came with the box set. It seems like it says the box set includes, it looks like this is a little sticker that they, uh, would, you would get at the record store because it says in stores now. So this may not have been something that actually came with the set because why would you put an advertisement telling you to go to the store and buy the set inside the set? So, this one here is trashed, and I think this is just, I mean, this is a postcard, like, kind of looking thing, but see how badly, bad condition it's in. Um, this seems to be, uh, just a little advertisement with a little, so maybe this didn't come with it either. I don't know, but it's in here. And then, oh, smell a little waft of cigarette smoke coming out of this box. So this was owned by a cigarette smoker, more than likely. Okay, and this one's in, in great condition, probably never played. It's the Sam Hain VHS. Um, but my wife owned this when it came out in 2000, and I think at some point, needing money, she burned the CDs and for herself and sold the set um, this set was very expensive when it came out um, from what I understand um, I think it sold for two hundred dollars when it came out so now you know decades later I think it's selling you know like I said uh, she got it for a really good price. Um, she didn't pay any six, seven hundred dollars for it. Um, anyway, so this is her set. So I'm not. Isn't that amazing? All right. So if I put Sam Hain box set unboxing, maybe I'll get some more subscribers from people that are uh, Sam Hain fans. Uh, Glenn Danzig fans. <clears throat> of course, Glenn Danzig has, I guess, still has his own line of comic books called Verotic or Verotica, <clears throat> which um, for a while he had Frank Frazetta, you know, um, doing covers and he was doing uh, Frank Frazetta comics. Um, I guess that was in the 1990s. <laughs> Time has really gotten away from me ladies and gentlemen so that's the kind of box set that's what my wife this is a box set I've had for years this one I highly recommend to you but um, I don't know if this is valuable like that Danzig uh, Sam Haynes set but it's got all this Hanna-Barbera cartoon music so uh, let me tell you this one you can actually just all this music's available on, on YouTube I think you can you can obtain it on YouTube uh, pretty easily oh, what else can we do here oh I put all my big little books together I've been um, let me show you those let's see can you see them there I've got Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Grimm's Ghost Stories, Woody Woodpecker, Space Ghost, Fantastic Four, Fred Flintstone, uh, Bugs Bunny. I've got two old Bugs Bunnies here. Um, anyway, some of these are from my childhood and some of them are from someone's childhood that would be 80 now. So, Halloween, how exciting. It's about to be Halloween. 
Uh, let's see if it is uh, daybreak yet. I guess eh, it's still still dark outside. Yeah, well, it's getting a little bit light. It is cold out there, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> um. Okay. Fantastic. Oh, let's get the remote. I'm talking to myself. Underneath this blanket is Drew the dog. She is not thrilled with this cold. Uh, think of it. All right. He likes to say, think of it. <sighs> so, oh, look at this. How about that? The Vault of Horror. This is reprints from the EC Horror Comics, printed sideways like those uh, mad books. What can I show you in here? Uh, here's here's more fake dog poop, ladies and gentlemen. How about that? Let's see if I can make it glow. Let's see. Hold on. Okay. Well, soon it will be Christmas time. It's a good thing I have the Christmas tree up and have had it up since uh, June. Um, so you came here to see comic books, have you? Let's go upstairs for a few moments and look at some comic books. I just bought uh, $3,000 worth of slabs and I'm wondering if I made a good decision for uh, 52 slabs for $3,000. No, I didn't actually. I saw that headline on somebody's uh, YouTube page. It's like, man, people have three thousand dollars to throw around on slab comics they can't even read. That's fine, ladies and gentlemen. I just someday we're gonna look back on these days. And it's going to be unbelievable that uh, we used to do that. And that uh, things are getting more severe by the hour, not by the just the day. Um, if you're paying attention, and if you're not paying attention, you'll. Soon you'll be aware, I have a feeling. But, turn on lights. I wonder if I should do a live stream later today. I don't know. Probably not. Okay. So. Plug this phone in. Ugh. I've got to um, start picking up from shows that I've been doing. Um, hold on a second. Uh, 
All right, I'll show you some things that I've got to put in the other room. I showed these the other night on uh, the Graphic Man channel on the Four Color Fossils show. These are some Digest magazines. I pulled them out to show on his show, but I haven't put them back up, so I don't know if the same, some of the people that watch on, watch the Four Color Fossils show, watch my show, but I don't think all of them. So I'll show them again here, and then I'll go in the other room, put them back on the shelf, so I have uh, some cool stuff to show you later. This is a British reprinting of American comic books. This ad on the back, Attack of the Mutants, some role-playing game. Yeah, see, they got the artwork in black and white in this miniature form. Um, um, but they weren't... Hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. They actually, before you feel too sorry for them, they also got their comics that they you know put out like in this format which is really cool this is an actual british comic not reprints of american comics so this is from 1985 so before you feel sorry for them getting our comics in black and white they did have some pretty cool pretty cool stuff i just found this one down Yesterday, uh, downstairs, need to get it on the shelf. All right, this is a collection of cartoons from the Japanese occupation after uh, World War II. We had tons of GIs and and, and military people in uh, stationed in Japan, and some of them. Got Japanese girlfriends and married Japanese women. A good friend of mine in elementary school, he was part Japanese. His dad was an older guy and his mom was Japanese. So when we went to his house, you know, we had to take our shoes off and walk around in our socks, which actually makes sense. That's a Japanese custom that kind of makes sense. Um, Look at this. Jokes for men, the kind you like. <laughs> okay. Fate Magazine. I'll do a show later because it's going to snow around 10 o'clock and I want to film the snow. Uh, because this channel is really, really, ex really the reason this channel exists is for me to, this is like my home movies. Um, this is how I, uh, Anyway, amazing. I want to go back down and watch Donald Trump. What am I doing up here? Um, I'm recording his speech from last night in, in uh, Las Vegas. This magazine was still around when I was a kid, the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. This is a Hannes Bach cover. He was one of those guys that was around in the old days of the pulps, you know, weird tales and all that. Okay. Science fiction fans, uh, this kind of cover with the monster menacing the women. Some, some science fiction fans would scornfully look upon this. They would call these guys BEMs, bug-eyed monsters. Um... We here at the Hotel Orloff love bug-eyed monsters. Look at that guy. How about that? Exploding army hand grenade. Um, super science fiction. There's definitely a bug-eyed monster. He's not that bug-eyed, but... This one uh, came out not long after Forbidden Planet. You can see the little bit of Robbie the robot in the design there. 
of that robot. How about that? I'm going to take some of these books back into the other room. Let's see. Oh, man, standing up is not fun. The temperature right now is 60 in the house. At least it's 60 here on this level. Okay, the dehumidifier needs to be empty. There are the two cats hanging out. Um, well, let's empty that dehumidifier. I'm going to put these books back. In the next episode that I do later this afternoon, I'll show some Erie publications, uh, magazines, and, and uh, if you guys will put down, if you do it quick enough, if you put comments down below, I'll be able to know um, what you want me to show tonight or this afternoon. Um, look at this 20 million miles to Earth adaptation. Amazing stories. It's the magic land of mescaline. Okay, let's put these two up and then let's empty that dehumidifier, man. What the frick was that? Okay. scared Alan the cat away. I'm just trying to entertain you guys while I empty the dehumidifier. Pete the cat is not scared, though. Alan is a scary cat. Ugh. Alan, you can go back. I'm just emptying the dehumidifier. Disrupted their slumber. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited about the snow, honestly. I, I uh, enjoy the snow. Okay. Um. Here's a little miniature. Uh, Mexican comic book. The uh, artwork inside is very pedestrian. Um, and here's another one. Oh my gosh, and another one. El Mensajero del Diablo. Obviously, the United States had the best comic books. Uh, everywhere else, we're either trying to reprint our books or they created things that were just, just inferior. I mean, uh, honestly, I mean, I don't mean to uh, hurt anyone's feelings, but. It's like saying uh, the best Rocky Boy comes from the southern part of the United States. I mean, it's like, you know, it's just a no-brainer. I mean, um, 
Yeah, they may try to make rockabilly music in France, but it's not going to be. It's just, come on. Let's not be ridiculous there. Oh, look at this. This is, this is where Apocalypse Now comes from. Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. And uh, look, Commando Extraordinary. Got some paperback books that have to be. Uh, remember how popular these books used to be? Now it's Diary of a Wimpy Kid and all that, Dork Diaries. But back when we were kids, you wanted to get, believe it or not, books from the library or Charlie Brown books, definitely. Sure did. I guess I'll put these books right here. Topo Gigio on top of them. That's the mask that I wore on the Sunday night uh, Halloween broadcast from Captain Strange Life and Horror Mike. Let's talk about being destructive. Do you want me to read this book to you? Probably. Oh, look, it's Countess Dracula and the Vampire Lovers. Double feature. Um... This deep. I got this book back in the 80s and I, I thought it was a funny title. And, uh, because, you know, I don't know. This is my, uh, this, I, I wanted this for so long when I was, uh, I got it when I was. Probably in junior high school. What the heck is in here? What? Okay, uh, my when we were packing, my mother-in-law put stuff into boxes, and that, and I'm always discovering things. Here's a man. This is an old. Uh, camera. She put things in the, and it's like I'll open things and it's like why, why is this in here? Okay anyway this is uh, this is something I dreamed of and I got this finally you know from for Christmas one year and it's uh, this was something that would shoot frame by frame so I could shoot my own stop motion animation films. There's still some film in it. So anyway this was an exciting gift. Um, stop motion animation was a dream. I, you know, I admired Ray Harryhausen and all of that. Willis O'Brien. So I still got the original box. This was a big, wonderful thing. And that Christmas morning, I was out in the backyard with Mego figures. Um, Mr. Fantastic and the Thing making my own stop-motion animation films that were terrible because I was too rushed and too excited, but... <sighs> One of those things. Um, yeah. I'm a... I'm going back downstairs, man. Oh, wow. So, I highly recommend for a nutritious breakfast the hell? Um, that you try Kaboom cereal. This is John. Kaboom. All right, big boy. Okay. Let's go downstairs for a little bit.
see if it's snowing yet. They said it's not going to start till 10, but who knows? They change the forecast every 15 minutes. The, the weathermen, at least whoever, wherever the Apple phone, whatever this stupid iPhone thing that I have here in my hand, the weather, it seems like they get the weather by looking out the window. They'll, they'll say, no rain today, and then you'll look out, it's raining, and then you'll go to your phone, and they have it that it's raining, but they didn't have it there until it started raining. Well, Mike Pence dropped out of the race last night, so how about that, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. Let's see, what else we got to show you? I'm really starting to... I'm starting to lose some of my enthusiasm for YouTube, honestly. I'm just like, what am I going to show you? Do you even care? I don't, I, you know. If I was Comic Book Tom, then I would have a million viewers. But uh, anyway, this is what I was trying to show you earlier. Creature from the Black Lagoon. It's not an exact replica of the 1960s Soki. It's stylized like it. Um, it's from... Super 7 toys. The original creature that came out in the 60s, he was holding a fish in his hand, as I recall. I never owned one of those because I was born in 1965, in my defense. Um, if I'd been born earlier, then I'd have a lot of cool stuff, but because in the 60s and 70s, you could have bought a lot of the cool stuff from the 50s and 60s cheap because it wasn't old. But being born when I was, I was subjected to a few years of, of good stuff in the early 70s from the comic companies, and then uh, things rapidly started to stink. I mean, there were worse times that you could be born at least I wasn't, I didn't grow up with this phone that I'm addicted to now, constantly scrolling through the phone. That's just a miserable existence that these uh, phones have uh, subjected us to. Um, now, we got to talk, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I say I'm getting sick of YouTube. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stick around right through all the upcoming disaster, you know, that's going to be happening. I mean, it's going to probably get pretty bad here before it gets better um, over the next few months or year. Um, uh, I'll tell you... Um, we got to limit our, our uh, we have a Gratu army here, which is about, we have, what, a 600 subscribers, about two, 200, 250 to 300 of those people actually watch the show. That's not many people by YouTube standards, but that's good enough. And so we're the Gratu army. It's... All these people, it's like they're walking on eggshells. It's like, well, he's not, he doesn't want to be called Gratu anymore. He's Dr. Orloff. It's like, don't worry about it, man. Call me whatever. Just don't call me late for dinner. I got a little sensitive there for a little bit about it because I just thought people were making fun of me, but, you know, who cares, you know? It's not, I'm, I'm, it's not junior high school, man. Uh, but anyway, you're in the Gratu Orloff army. Some of you are. And some of you will be recruited and join. We've got we to gotta try to limit our screen time. You, know, you can watch YouTube all you want if it's on a TV screen. But on your phone scrolling, it, it's messing my eyes up. It's, it's, it's just a horrible look to be looking at your phone all the time. Let's see if we can limit staring at a phone. What would be a reasonable amount? 30 minutes a day? If we could do that, I think we'd be better human beings. 
Um, let's uh, let's stop slabbing comics. That's completely just. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, I still love old comics. My love for them has not changed, but I cannot stand being around other comic book collectors, people that that think slabbing comics is just a great thing. I don't, I don't get it. Um, I'm not trying to be reactionary. I just, it's just an unpleasant thing. Um, if you've got comics that are so valuable, you're scared to handle them. Maybe they should be in a museum. Um, uh, I'm really just hanging out here to stop. I'm recording this Donald Trump speech, and I want to stop it when he finishes talking. And because I'm almost out of blank DVD dash R's, I'm going to have to order some on Tuesday when I get paid my retirement. And I, oh, my hands smell terrible. Um, what was I handling that smells terrible? And I realized it was that pig mask. That's why my hands smell terrible from that horrible rubber. That's the problem again with Halloween are these masks, man. It's cool and everything until you put the mask on and then you can't breathe. And now it just reminds me of that couple of years when they expected us to wear those masks just to, to go in a store. And as soon as I would walk out, the, the doors would open up from Kroger. I would pull that thing off. And other people kept wearing it all the way to their car. And they drove home with the thing on. And it's like, wow. I'm enough of a sheep that I put it on inside the store just because I don't like conflict. But it's ridic it was all ridiculous. And, and, and it's, you know, it's known that they do nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's like a chain link fence keeps mosquitoes out. Anyway, oh, there's stuff we can look at in these drawers here. So, what am I doing? I can show you cool stuff without having to go upstairs. All right. Let me put you guys down here. Let's see what's in this drawer. Oh, this... This is perfect for Halloween. I, it's perfect for all year long. But, you know, people think Halloween's the time to show monster stuff. Actually, let me put you guys up here. So how you guys been doing? Let's put you here. There we go. Okay. Look at this poster. I need to get this flattened, pressed, whatever you want to call it. It's Dr. Satanicus. <laughs> this is clearly just like kids. I, I, I tried looking this up, what it is, and it's even autographed. It says, best wishes, Dr. Satanicus. So I got to get this flattened. But what's cool is that kid looks like he might be about 14 years old. I think it was some kind of Halloween thing. I don't think they're actually a band. But what's neat is that they're dressed as, see that mummy back there? He's in the exact pose of the Aurora model kit. So... Whatever Dr. Satanicus is, this poster came from Texas, maybe. Or, so if you know what Dr. Satanicus is, if you're from the Arlington, Texas area, let me know. What's in this? Oh, my goodness. I need to show this to my wife. 
this is my my mother either graduating high school or college I'm not sure not much light here is there here's my mother this is my oldest brother named Steve passed away a few years ago oh this is my grandfather on my dad's side Philip Lefty Weinert, he played for the Yankees in 1931 for the, um, this must be a, a minor league team. He played for the Phillies, the Cubs, a lot of bands. Oh, a picture of Connie Francis. She's still around. I always love Connie Francis. I love how her music, her songs always build to a crescendo. Wonderful. Connie Francis. And this is a picture of the 1931 Yankees. My grandfather is one of them, but I don't know which one he is. My father could have probably pointed him out, but I bought that picture off eBay after my, after my uh, dad passed away. Oh, he's ending. Oh, shoot. I'm going to probably get a copyright claim for the Booker T. No, that's Sam. That's, that's, um, um, that's, um, anyway. Anyway, well, we already got it, so it's, it's the way it goes. It's a picture of my mom and her mom. There's all kinds of pictures in here. What is that? That's La Rochelle. That's in France, a beach in France. My family lived in France before I was born. My father was in the army. He was one of he was one of the main advisors when they filmed the John Wayne movie, The Longest Day, recreating the uh, the landing on the beach of Normandy and my father was there um, um, helping out with that that was his assignment to do that and uh, look at this this is a sack from Austin books in Austin Texas it's uh, this is from the 80s it's Peter Bagg's art. He designed it especially for Austin Books. Two stores to serve you. This was a really, well, it's, I'm sure it's still operating. It was a great, it is a great comic store in Austin, Texas. What else we got here? It's Journey to the Moon, 1969. Oh, look at this. It's a picture of the gunfight arcade machine, which I actually have one down in the basement. That was one of the earliest video games. What else is in here, man? Some newspapers. What? I made my own pack of Planet of the Apes bubblegum cards when I was in elementary school. So it opens up to something. Let's see what's inside of it. What was I up to back in 1974? I open it up. Oh, look. It's Cornelius. I cut that off the side of the model kit box. And I made my own Planet of the Apes cards. That's how much I was into Planet of the Apes. I was so into Planet of the Apes. I still am into Planet of the Apes. What am I talking about? This must be a tale to one of those alien action figures. Here's the instruction manual to the gunfight game. <sighs> What 
else is in here. I am, I'm starting to get hungry. William Boyd in the doomed caravan. Okay. And. Oh, this is cool. The End, an, an independent international release. My, my friend Tom owned the actual original artwork that they used to film the end credits. It was an actual, this was an actual painting and I made a color copy of it. So that's what that is. Um, this is a, uh, you know, there's a Phil Harris song called The Thing. This is the sheet music to it. And this is a museum, the Weatherby Arms Museum in Houston, Texas. I picked up this flyer in a hotel lobby when I was like a little kid, and I guess it looked like a castle. But it's, it's really horrifying. It's like a museum. It has like knights, you know, armor and stuff, but it has torture devices. And I remember being horrified, but like they're cutting this guy's head off here. But this one, man, I got to turn around. I'm just doing a show with no prior planning and the lighting's not adequate. See right there, this guy's in a chair and there's, there's like stuff going in, gouging his eyes out. So I just remember looking at this when I was in second grade and thinking there's a museum out there that shows people, you know, horribly being tortured. And I thought that was kind of weird, man. All right. So... Okay, let's go back and look at comic books, I guess. Ooh, the Dr. Satanicus poster has to be put back up. Well, Donald Trump's going to be somewhere, I think, today. Let's, ow, take a look. i got to stand up. Ugh. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Oh, I got to show you something. Did you watch? Last Saturday I did an episode, and I was looking at all the leaves on the trees and talking about how beautiful they were. Remember I showed the, all the orange leaves on the trees in front of the house? And then I drove around the town of Rural Retreat and showed you how beautiful fall looked. Well, in the last week, um, every single leaf has fallen off the tree. That's why it was good that I filmed that. Um, I'll show you. Let's go outside and look at the sky, see if it looks like snow. Um, What is this piece of paper in my front yard here? Yeah, see, gray skies. Okay, there's a piece of paper here. I don't know what this is. Let's see if it's one thing of mine. No, it isn't. It's from the. It's from uh, the grocery store. Okay. Anyway, let's. 
let me show you. I'm getting the same shot, same angle that I was in last week.